Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about brake lines and specifically we are going to be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of stainless steel brake lines and how they differ from the OEM rubber parts. So before we get into the advantages and disadvantages of stainless steel brake lines, let me first give you a general overview of how braking systems in most cars work. So you have of course the human interface element which is the brake pedal itself. Stepping on this activates a brake booster which magnifies the pressure from your foot and activates the master cylinder which is responsible for converting the pressure from your foot into hydraulic pressure which is then split by a combinational valve or some other mechanism which sends that hydraulic pressure to all four wheels. Initially it sends this pressure through these metal hard lines throughout the car which have pretty much no flex in them and then those eventually run to a flexible line that then runs to the wheel. It needs to be flexible to be able to accommodate for the movements of the wheel, whether it be from steering or deflection from hitting a bump. And specifically, we will be looking at that flex line today, which on most vehicles from the factory is rubber. This is the brake line for my 2016 Z. I'll leave a link in the description below to my install video of the stainless steel lines that I replaced this with. But yes, normally the material is rubber from the factory because rubber is fairly cheap. It's flexible like it needs to be and it holds the fluid just fine. But the problem with rubber hoses is as the hose heats up from maybe the brake fluid being used at a racetrack, or if the rubber's just getting old and it's becoming more malleable, the rubber tends to expand under a lot of pressure when you press the pedal firmly. This sort of expansion in the rubber hose is not a good thing because it causes a bit of squishiness in the brake pedal. As you apply the brakes, you're doing more work to expand the hose rather than actually apply pressure to the brake cylinder, which forces the pads against the rotor. So the whole idea behind stainless steel lines is you want to reinforce those lines a little bit while still keeping them flexible. This is accomplished by using, I think, a Teflon core, and then they wrap it with a stainless steel mesh, and this reinforces the lines a little bit, prevents them from being able to expand, which means you're applying more pressure on the actual cylinder and doing more work to actually stop the car. So why would you buy stainless steel brake lines? Well, for the reason just mentioned, stainless steel brake lines can sometimes give you a firmer pedal feel by eliminating the expansion inside the brake line. They are also in some ways more resistant to damage from, say, tearing. If like a sharp rock gets kicked up and it hits your brake line, they're a little less resistant to being torn open than your OEM rubber hoses. And some people like the looks of the stainless steel lines much better than the rubber hoses. But there are, of course, disadvantages to stainless steel lines as well. One of those being the potential for fraying inside the line. If you don't install the brake lines properly and they rub up against a cross member or something, it's possible for those lines to become torn or frayed, and that can cause more damage, whereas OEM rubber hoses don't have that sort of problem. And of course, stainless steel lines are more expensive than rubber hoses. Rubber hoses are cheap, that's why the factories end up using those normally on their cars. But with stainless steel lines, there's a little more work that goes into their construction, so they're of course more expensive than your OEM hoses. Now, OEM rubber lines are not actually as bad as I've made them out to seem here. This is a gross exaggeration of the sort of expansion you might see in rubber hoses. Normally these hoses are also reinforced with some sort of wire mesh, or they may have some other sort of reinforcement inside the line, and that limits the amount of expansion that you actually get from the brake lines. The real performance advantage from stainless steel lines is going to be if you, say, take it to the track, where the increased heat inside the brake fluid can cause the rubber hose to become more flexible and possibly expand more, which causes a bit of sort of brake fade as you get a little bit of squishiness inside the pedal. Or if your rubber brake lines are becoming old, they're maybe drying out and starting to deteriorate, it might be an option to replace them with stainless steel lines because they will firm up that pedal a little bit. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. If you found it enjoyable or informative, make sure you give it the thumbs up. To my subscribers, I'm sorry that I haven't been posting videos as often lately. Unfortunately, I started a new job a couple of weeks ago, so I've been pretty busy with that. But I'm still trying to post videos maybe about once a week. Um, in the future, I am going to be doing more videos sort of like this and the brake rotor video that I did recently. I want to kind of get more into the mechanics of cars and how they work what different performance upgrades do, so stay tuned for more of those, and I will of course still be blogging about the Z and the Sentra occasionally, so you guys will still get some more of that as well. For anybody who's new to my channel, I do have a 370Z that I'm getting ready to go forced induction on, so stay tuned for that build. I'm hopefully going to be doing that here in the next year or so, but anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video. Later.